Today's episode of the Ross Cloud Podcast is sponsored in part by GospelStationCharts.com, where you can view Gospel Radio Station song charts and track the promotion of your song, such as view how many stations are playing your song and how often, including what day and time your song played. Check it out now. Visit GospelStationCharts.com. Hello and welcome to the Ross Cloud Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Ross, and this platform was created to motivate and to inspire in hopes that you will become a better you. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody that's listening all over the world. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Ross Cloud Podcast. Hey, listen, we have a very, very special guest with us. We have two special guests with us here today. Uh, we're no stranger to the Ross Cloud Podcast. We have Miss Candy Jeter, Candy T. Jeter. And we have Mr. Alfred Shaw. Mr. Al Shaw. What's happening, bro? Hey, much. Candy, how you be? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I can't complain. Y'all doing all right today? Yeah. Good. yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hanging in there. Hanging in there. I had a rough ass start, I tell you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but we're going to have a great conversation tonight, folks. Listen, I have a feeling we are. <laughs> I think we are, too. Uh, listen, um, uh, we have Candy, who's here. Candy's a author. Uh, she has published two books or three, Candy? Two. Two, okay. And so here's one of the books right here. We're going to kind of get into her books on today. It's Seven Steps to Letting Go Even When It Seems Possible. If you haven't got your copy, please go out and get it. Letting Go, A Guide for Successful Women in Midlife Ready to Release What's Holding Them Back. And then the second one, we have 25 Thoughts About Your Destiny, Candy Taylor Jeter. Uh, reconstruct your world by reconstructing your mind. These are the two great books right here. Where can they purchase these books from, Candy? Um, they can go to the lettinggobook.com and they can find those books there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Now, I know one of these books right here specifically is just for women, correct? Would you say that? Or for everybody. I mean, a lot of people do, but mm -hmm. women are the only ones who actually listen. So oh. I've, I've 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 geared it for marketing purposes okay. towards women. All oh, right, right, uh -huh. because women are the ones who just scream the loudest, uh -huh. you know. But men have read it and they kind of DM and talk about it. Really, so and so it's good mm -hmm. for for men and women. Okay, then uh, you know. Yeah, it's not just women, but mm -hmm. you know, you know how people market stuff to children. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got you. But adults okay. like it, uh, you know, your your uh, PS threes and stuff like that. I but got adults you. Uh -huh. play them. I got you. You know, okay. it's it's just whoever screams the loudest. You I know, you, you market your stuff to it, but anybody can use it I because everybody it. needs to learn how to let go. Oh yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that. And mm -hmm. um. You know, I like that little shade you do at the brothers. You know, they say we don't like to listen. <laughs> well, I mean, the they don't. don't they know. don't ask for a lot. Let's okay. say that. All right. They Thank don't. You. They don't ask for a lot. Okay. So you don't really know what they want because they don't really say a whole lot. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Gotcha. Women are the ones who are speaking louder about what it is that they want, don't want, things like that. I got you. So right here, I'm looking at something right here. Expand your present reality. Consciousness mm -hmm. is a sense of awareness, but awareness of what? And uh, I could. You want me to read on on this right here? You could, can. can you whatever. build a little bit? Whatever on that hits right you. There? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Build on that right there. This title right here, and then we'll we'll just open the conversation right there. Expand expanding your present reality, if you would. I mean, what is this? Okay, it says consciousness is a sense of awareness, but awareness of what? The realization of any object, idea, or condition. All of this includes thoughts, emotions, sensations, and knowledge that make up the different phases of the mind, which can expand into uh, sub uh, subconsciousness, superconsciousness, and super subconsciousness. It's a lot of. <laughs> Tongue twisters in there, girl. <laughs> so basically what that's saying is, um, you know how when people say get a life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Get a life basically just means that you need to add more into your life so that you can see that things are bigger than 
the perspective that you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're expanding your consciousness, you're basically willing to be curious about a situation and look at it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a hard time letting go of something or if you're having a hard time understanding something, if you're having a hard time accepting something, usually it is because you are resisting expansion of consciousness, Mm -hmm. right? Because you are attached to something. And because we attachments hold us hostage and they keep us stuck, Mm -hmm. because we have attached a circumstance, a situation, an experience to something. And we stay stuck there because we either want somebody to rescue us, Mm -hmm. give us an explanation, or make it right. And so um, expanding your consciousness and, and your subconscious, which is even on a deeper level, is about moving from your head to your heart. Mm. Because a lot of times we're conscious about things because we've opened our mind up to it, but our heart is closed to it. So we know it, but we have not made it a part of us. Mm. Right? So that's where the subconscious and super subconscious comes in, where you actually, it's like breathing. You know, so if something happens to you and you, you're you trying to go with the flow of life and not resist it, then it just becomes a way of life for you rather than something that you're trying to break your neck trying to do, oh. you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got you. I got that you. makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Jump on in there. Yeah. I know your wheels are turning. You want to you wanna kind of build off of what she just said a little bit? Um, she said it. She kind of said that pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I I, I agree with. Um, it's it's just a, a di- different perspective, interesting, and and truth. Like, just I, I can't be as articulate, but uh, <laughs> he's doing a good job. It was a lot. Of, it, it was a lot of information. Yeah, like, just in in that block, but um, just how you. What you said about um, an individual just being able to open their mind and expand their attachment, because when you think about attachments, like your memories, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. attachment. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking as, as early as four years old, right? You know, right. different things, different mer- memories, different hurts, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I've never looked at it, you know, like being attached to it. Mm-hmm. And it actually holding me back and not really giving me an opportunity to grow. Yeah. Mm. To expand. I've never yeah. viewed it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just sitting over here kind of yeah. playing through that, you know, yeah. that mm-hmm. perspective. And that's that's beautiful. And it's there's some uh to know that this attachment which I reflect on is not bringing me peace. It's not bringing me joy. Why am I continuing to hold on to it? Right. You know what I'm saying? There may be something on the other side. So, Because it's familiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's familiar. You know, we hang on to things that we know because we are afraid to move into unknown territory. Mm -hmm. If I let this go, what am I going to hold on to? What am I going to grasp on to? But when you think about expanding consciousness, if you think about the life of Christ or the life of Krishna or the life of Muhammad or the life of Buddha, when you think of the life of different teachers, mm-hmm. um, they exp- they had to expand and go beyond what they knew in order to experiment to say what works and what doesn't work so many times we don't even know what's what works for us because Mm. we're too afraid to experiment because when you experiment with spirituality with god with consciousness um you end up in territory where people tell you not to go 
Mm-hmm. You know, don't mess with this. Don't go here. Don't do this. Don't think that. Don't say this. Don't. And then you end up in this little tiny box. But yet you may be in a major life situation that's forcing you to go deeper and expand, right? Mm-hmm. And when you don't, you feel like now you have to have a drink, you have to go have sex, you have to take drugs, when really it's just your consciousness trying to get you to expand. So that's why people do those things. That's that's what addiction comes out of. Addiction comes from being stuck in a box and trying to figure out how to get out of this box and have this experience without being doing something that's going to pull them away from what they are familiar with. If I take this drug, I can relieve my pain. If I get this drink, I can relieve this itch. If I go and over here and have sex with this person because I don't really want to be with this person, then I don't have to face that. I can go over here for a minute and get this temporary relief. So you're not really expanding your consciousness. You're basically cheating on spirituality, you know, and then you get stuck in a loop. Mm -hmm. So you're not really letting go, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing about letting go. Letting go doesn't mean I don't like this anymore, so I'm leaving. Letting go actually means I'm expanding my consciousness so that every experience that I have in my life is enriching me and it's causing me to graduate. It's causing me to move forward. Now, if we grow, what often happens is is we have issues in our relationships. We already have issues in our relationships, even if we stay where we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when you grow and you feel yourself outgrowing your partner, A lot of times people don't want to outgrow their partner. So a lot of times they just stay stuck in this rut that they're in. And then five years goes by, 10 years goes by, 12 years goes by. And you're like, what the hell are we doing? Nobody's growing. Right? Can I ask a question? How does, so what does that look like, outgrowing your partner? Mm. Um, I think that we all change, but yet, like, I know that for me, being in the land of the free, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. I change rapidly, Mm -hmm. but when I'm in a relationship, when I feel a change coming on, um, I often will check in with my partner we have conversations see what they're thinking where they are if 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 you are in a long-term relationship and you're not having those conversations these changes happen without us even talking about them and then you look up and you find that you're there are gaps in the relationship sure. because someone has awakened to a particular part of themselves mm-hmm. that they that was lying dormant when you met 10 years ago. Sure. Right? Mm-hmm. And if you're not constantly checking in with each other, you could be moving and they could be thinking you're the same yeah. and not even really notice the change. And you might look up and say, you know what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to we need to really reevaluate this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you don't really feel that when you're by yourself. You don't feel, you don't have anybody to bounce that off of. I got you. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think relationships are good to be in because it actually gives you a measuring stick of where you are if you're willing to use it as a measuring stick. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because since I've been divorced, I've been like, pew, pew, pew. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just I can go anywhere with this thing that I want without anyone questioning me and saying, Mm -hmm. hey, what are you doing? 
So whether you like you mad- weren't meditating yesterday, why are you mm-hmm. meditating today? What does that mean? Like if I want to experiment with that and I want to meditate for forty minutes, mm-hmm. I ain't got nobody saying, "Hey, what you doing in there?" Yeah, yeah. I meditate. Oh, you meditating? You getting brand new? I see you what know, you're saying. I, so, I, so basically, what you, what you're saying is whether you're married or single growth is going to happen regardless the only thing is you have to learn how to coexist with someone uh in the midst of them growing and you're growing changing whether whether it's uh mental whether it's physical whatever it is we change as we get older yeah, Women they have to, and they have okay. to allow you to do that okay mm-hmm. what if you decided okay i'm going to become vegan this is a good example. Y'all been eating meat all your lives, all, all your entire relationship. All the kids eat meat, but you went to the doctor, and the doctor said that, you know, you have chole- high cholesterol, mm-hmm. and you need to stop eating meat. Nobody else wants to do that. So you decide, well, I'm going to go on this journey on my own. And you can either get support or you can get a lot of pushback. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody love you. I don't think they're going <laughs> to. Right. They're going to push back. Yeah, I, ain't, I don't think they're going to say, Chris, you need to go ahead and eat this meat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not unless they just don't like you. Okay. That's it. Right. Right. <laughs> but some people do struggle with that because there are other people in the household, other people around them mm-hmm. that are eating meat and they're, and you're not. Yeah. You know, that's that's a, a form of growth, mm-hmm. you know, where you've just evolved. And then after a while, you just decide, OK, well, I don't eat meat. You may inspire them or not. This is the same way with expanding consciousness, in my opinion, yeah. where you wake up and you say something needs to change in my life. Yeah. And when you say whatever that is, that could either rock the boat of the relationship or it could bring you all closer together. Mm -hmm. And some people are afraid Mm -hmm. to expand in relationships because they don't want to outgrow their partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, they don't want to outgrow. So subconsciously, they hold themselves back in a lot of cases. Yeah, you got to be a pretty, um, so you got to be mature. You got to be secure, too. Uh, to allow that, what I think about is when me and Al, I remember, I'm gonna just use this as an a, a, as an example, and I'm not on here saying like like we these perfect individuals when it comes to dieting. That's not what I'm saying <laughs> when I say this, bro. Did you say to diet? To dieting, dieting, oh, yeah. dieting, Definitely and watching not. what we eat. But nah. to your example, to to use this as an example to what you're saying. So me and Al recently we went we went somewhere. And I think, I don't know what we was getting, bro, but I think maybe I got, um, I, I might have got something sweet or whatever. Uh, I, you know, I got something. Al, on the other hand, used discipline and said, I want it, bro, but I'm not going to do it. Now, if I was immature, then I say, oh, man, come on, man. Man, go on and get it. But I didn't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. What I said was, I feel you. I feel you, bro. That's where you at. He's a, so, in other words, he's expanding. That's my brother. I'm just using a brother, yeah, brother example. But this is where we have to be with our spouses too. Okay, baby. Hey, I feel you. Exactly. I feel you. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab this donut. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do your thing, bro. I love you. I love yeah. to see the expansion. I ain't yeah. there yet. So I think, and I just wanted to use that as, as an example. That's a good example. And, but I know it can be probably yeah. a little bit more <laughs> severe yeah. than that where it can cause friction yeah. within uh, relationships yeah. and within marriage. I just use that as a, as you was talking, that's that's the first example came up. Like Al is now making some changes and I still probably am not making those changes along with him. Are you though. making those changes for real, Al? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. attempting every day <laughs> uh, to make those changes. Good. That's real. And, I, and you know what? This facts. Is, I, about three weeks ago, I made up in my mind. I said, no matter what, I'm not going to quit. Mm. And I did say, I'm actually so, going to So fight. what are you trying to do exactly? Um, so I went to the doctor. <laughs> uh-huh. Got to do it. So there's some things, you know, as I'm, I'm getting older yeah. Yeah. that I need to get in place one of them was um so i snore so i had to, i needed to take the sleep test i did that then you know they recommended the equipment yeah mm-hmm. so i got a call two days ago so just kind of 
checking some of the things off the box right. to get to the root, you know, of what's kind of, you know, knocking some things out the way. And okay. I need to lose weight because I look better. Right, yeah. right. And you feel better. better. You know better. what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I move better and my joints better. Mm-hmm. My feet better. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is better. Yeah, I my got you. Fit better. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> facts. So you have lost. Tuna. You know what? I don't. <laughs> I don't use the scale. I just go by my clothes. But you feel it. Okay, that's a great way. Um. Now I'm only about three weeks in. That's fine. <laughs> that's you cool can though. really but, tell but, a difference uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, you can tell though. Mm-hmm. It's you know right now it's more mental than that's than right. Anything in my body. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. like. I, I, I'm tr- trying to get my diet to where I'm figuring out what's making me bloated mm. because that that's, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's dairy. Yeah. Um, you know, I trace back to like, I had, we catered an event, an event today and I, you know, I didn't get a plate. We didn't, I didn't eat to like three, but you know, I had to taste the food. So I'm tasting the green beans. Got the mac and cheese. Oh, went yeah. back to the mac and cheese. I got you. And then went back one more time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That dairy, it, you know, it yeah. wasn't sitting right. So, right. Yeah. You know, just figuring things like that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. You know, I've been accustomed to, to eating. So. Mm. Right. Right. So, right. That, that pasta and, that's and tough. That bread. I know. Yeah, it's so bread delicious. And, that <laughs> it is delicious. Yes. And bread, that's probably one of yeah, my toughest Yeah, dairy things is the so. hardest for me. Yeah. As, as, yeah. as we Cheese, have. pizza. Cheese. Cheese, pizza, man. Cheese, oh, man. pizza. Yeah. Cheese. I can probably let go of everything, but I like cheese and ice cream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Those are my favorites. You know, I think of everything. Is it really? Yeah, I'm all right without meat. I can do vegetables. Okay. Um, I can even let go white potatoes. But when it comes to that cheese man, and that ice cream. Man. Cheese and fried foods for me. Yeah, it's a tough uh-huh. one. Man. Like fried open. Fried open. Lord, have mercy. Lord, man, don't talk about it. Now, see, now when Ooh. we're talking about food, and I always use food as an example yeah. of expanding consciousness, only because that's how we bond over is through food, right? This is how we connect with, with loved ones when we get together. What y'all going to bring? What we going to eat? Mm-hmm. You know? Those things. And as soon as you make a lifestyle change and you say, oh, I don't eat mac and cheese no more. I got you. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Like, I don't eat mac and cheese anymore. I don't eat cheese anymore. Then people start, you know, you got to go through that f- that growth phase yeah. of letting go. This mm-hmm. is all a part of letting go. Letting go of the tradition. Letting go of that feeling of, okay, Come on, you can taste it. Just just taste a little bit. Yeah. Just get you a little bit. A little bit ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a lot of pressure sometimes when you're first starting out. And so that's a part of letting go, right? What if that's the only way that you connect with your parents? And 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 your and your parents and you you got a little rift in your family? Your parents invite you over, and you say, "You know, I don't, I don't, I don't even eat macaroni and cheese no more." I got you. Mm-hmm. That can bring up so much that you're expanding your your conscious has been expanded to. Yeah. I don't really need cheese anymore mm-hmm. because it's not good for me. Mm-hmm. That cheese could be religion. That cheese can be a job. That cheese can be. A uh, decision that you need to make in regards to whether you need to stay married or divorced. That cheese can be um, a relationship with your children. Mm. It could be anything. We always have to go through this phase of letting go of something because life is full of exchanges. Do I want my health or do I want that macaroni and cheese? Wow. Do I want a relationship with my children or do I want to deal with their mama, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, or not? You know, mm-hmm. whatever it is connected to, everything is attached to something that you want and that you don't want. Mm-hmm. And so you always have to be in a state where you're able to make the best decisions for yourself. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Like and that is what letting go is all about. Being in a state where you're always able, not that you do, mm-hmm. but you're always able to make the best decisions for yourself and you're able to withstand the pushback that you might get, the changes that you might have to go through and the sacrifices that you have to make in order to get where you want. We, we, we don't follow through on things because we're not willing to make those trade-offs. Mm. And you just have to get, like Al said it, it's more of a mindset than right now than anything, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's that's with everything. Yeah. And so that I was inspired to write that book because it is part of a nine-step program that I do called sh- Shifting from Force to Power. Mm. And a lot of times we're forcing life. Right now you're in the forcing phase where you're like, I got to do this Mm -hmm. because the doctor said, if I don't do this, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. What you're on a journey towards your power though. And you are discovering the power along the way with every step. And every time you say, I'm I'm not going to have that mac and cheese and you really make it through, you get another layer of power or another discovery of power to where eventually it becomes like breathing. Hello there. I'm Shanta Caldwell, and this is your sticky note. Practice the pause. Pause before judging. Pause before assuming. Pause before accusing. Pause whenever you're about to react harshly and you'll avoid doing and saying things you'll later regret. I'm Shanta Caldwell. This is your sticky note. Stick it up. Love that. Which I think is a great segue to shift a little bit to kind of talk about what we see happening within the atmosphere in our society today as it pertains to uh, black entrepreneurship, black artists, contracts, no contracts, and also uh, independency. Um, at what point do we let it go when it comes to careers and expansion uh, as let it pertains to that? Based off of what we see happening with... Uh, coming out of corporate and going into a- entrepreneurship? Absolutely. Or coming out of um, going independent and making independent films and not being under a major uh, studio uh, like Universal or Warner Brothers and funding it yourself and then finding a way to um, uh, get it funded, you know what I'm saying? So far as that type of expansion from that standpoint of letting it go, at what point do we let it go as it pertains to these corporations? They have all of the money, and we're dealing with this small budget. Most of the time we're funding it ourselves, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an artist, and I mean from the perspective of uh, I'm going to come from the black perspective, if you would, uh, well, what we have to go through in order to get to that next level. Whatever that next level is for us, um, how does that equate with letting go and everything that we talked about just now? Just to kind of shift a little bit, uh, and I'll let either one of y'all kind of expound on that. Um, I know you wrote the book, Candy, so if you want to go first, ladies I first. I don't have to because it's, okay. it's the same. Okay, then. I think that that's about the same. It's about the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. Being We're able to let go of what you familiar with and your comfort zone. Yeah. Like you want to expound on that a little bit, Al? No, I agree. Okay. Okay. I agree. Okay. So I guess we kind of like right in the middle <laughs> with that one then. Yeah. <laughs> no segue on that, is it? Because <laughs> it kind of sums it up. I mean, how do you this feel a mindset. about it? Uh, I, I, I feel the same way. I, I really feel like we probably need to start doing that. Is it tough? Is it hard? Yes. It's, it's probably going to be very hard because the corporations have all of the money. And so when it comes to changing the mindset of saying, I'm going to be independent, I'm going to run with this torch, it's going to be difficult because I have to fund this out of my pocket. I really can't afford to do this or that because you got to pay for cameras. You got to pay for, and I'm talking about right now, I'm just talking about 
from that standpoint of it, whatever mm-hmm. that thing is, even when it comes to restaurant business, restaurant business is extremely expensive. Right. Uh, entertainment business. Extremely. It's grueling, too. Oh, restaurant it's, business oh, is it's, grueling. It's a grind. It's, it's mm-hmm. really a grind. You really have to have a passion for it. Uh, I think that's with anything that you do. You have to have a great deal of, of, of passion to do it, and you can get tunnel vision. I mean, tunnel, yeah, tunnel, tunnel vision with it sometimes and just like, I'm going straight forward. I don't care what's in front of me. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. even with letting go, do you think that would affect the psyche a little bit? And how do you balance that? Like, how do you keep that together without it destroying uh, the mental capacity, the, the mindset, basically? Even though you have a mindset to be strong and make it work, it can break you down if it lets you. So how do you bring about a balance with that? I don't As know. it pertains you know, to letting go, when, when, I mean, so okay. tough. Maybe, maybe I'm mean, not. You mean like when running a business, like period, like with anything, Al? Like you know, I'm I'm hell bent on getting this done. I don't care what's in my way. I believe that this is for me. I'm going to do it, and you're letting go of the, of. And maybe I'm coming from an artist's perspective then. No, you're that. letting go of the familiar mm. way that you're normally used to doing things. You got to be open and flexible. Correct. And willing to try things mm-hmm. and 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 look crazy yeah. sometimes when you have an idea and people say, you know, that ain't going to work or uh, what are you talking about or where are you going to get the money to do this or that. So you do have to go to a place where you have an expanded consciousness enough to know that you have you can't be in a box and make something work. You have to literally be out of your mind. Okay. So as, as an entrepreneur, there are things <laughs> that don't always make sense. No, you can go into some dark places, basically, yeah. is what I'm saying. So what I'm asking is, how do we bring about a balance with that? How can we bring about a balance with that and... You know, we're saying we're letting go. There are certain things that we can't let go of because we actually may need it. So how do we find ourselves to well, bring balance? So maybe I'm not saying it right. Maybe I am. But I when, when you're letting go, like mm-hmm. I said, you're more expanding. You're okay. building on what you have. Mm-hmm. You're not really throwing away anything. You're not leaving anything. You're building on what it is that you already have and what you already know. Gotcha. And I think that on when we are working for other people, you know, I, I got to go back to when this whole thing where people try to have more than one wife, <laughs> you know, this polygamy thing. <laughs> you haven't even mastered monogamy. Nobody's mastered monogamy yet that I've <laughs> seen. I was just talking to Al. Can't nobody be married to one person and, mm-hmm. and it be right. So what makes you think that you can marry three or four people, (laughs) right? So when it comes to entrepreneurship, if you're not a good employee Mm. and if you haven't mastered rising to the top of your game within a framework where everything is provided for you, Mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur is... uh, a lot more difficult and people think that it's easy mm-hmm. right right oh, i ain't gonna work for nobody i'm gonna do my own thing you are never doing your own thing you're gonna always do what the customer demands if you want to make some money mm. and you gotta listen to what people want and still put yourself into it and figure out that area for yourself. But you're still serving the people. True. Mm -hmm. You work for the people. When you work for a corporation, you work for one person. That's your boss. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be like, you know, what you want? Oh, I want this on my desk by five. Okay, you got it. That's really all you got to do. That's it. When you're working for yourself... You got 50 things that need to be done, and you got to do all of them. So being able to build relationships and being able to uh, connect with people on a very deep level so that they can actually do 
what you want them to do is a skill that I think is number one in entrepreneurship. And a lot of people don't realize that. People say they don't they want to have their own business because they don't like people. If you don't like people and you think you're going to have your own business, <laughs> you're not going to be a very prosperous person. <laughs> right, right. Because the people, right. that they're the money. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think that you just have to know what you're getting into, just like you have to know what you're getting into when you're in any relationship. You're in one relationship, mm-hmm. in a marriage. You're in many relationships when you are you're married to the people when you're an entrepreneur. And we always have to look at the skills that we have in order to make a marriage work. You have to have those same skills in order to make all relationships work. Loyalty, honesty, faithfulness, consistency, communication, you know, transparency, interaction, engagement, that's for our relationships. And I think that once we realize that that's imperative in our relationships, we can get somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We keep trying to take shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. No, it's not. No, I'm gonna go over here because I don't like doing that. No. Well, you're gonna have to do that mm. over here. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You can't get away from it. Yeah. So I think that. You know, for a long time, we thought, oh, I can't wait to get grown so I can do what I want to do. And then you can't even eat no damn macaroni and cheese. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who thought? You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy. <laughs> you can't even have no macaroni and cheese. That's right. We That's thought right. when we got grown, we were going to be able to do whatever. You never nah. can do whatever you want to do. You never, never. can do what. Never. 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 I told my daughter, I said, you know, you know, you say you want a mobile grooming uh, thing. You might want to come home and whatever you're paying for rent, give it to me. We'll put it aside. And in 18 months, you'll have enough to buy your mobile grooming unit. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, but then when I come home, you're going to be telling me when to take out the trash. You're going to be <laughs> telling me when to do this. When to do this. I said, but you got to take your trash down to the street you gotta take anyway it in your right. own place. It's a small sacrifice. So why are you <laughs> constricting your consciousness and not willing to make a sacrifice, yeah. open up, yeah. make the sacrifice? See, you think you're being open when you have your own place and you're paying your own bills and you can smoke or you can drink or you can mm-hmm. have sex. You can do whatever you want to do in there. Right. But while you're doing that, your dream is passing you by. Well, that's true. That's true. You're really expanding your consciousness where you take all of your funds and you put them here yeah. for 18 months, get what you want to get, do what you want to do. This is entrepreneurship. This is what entrepreneurship is about. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're not willing to do that, mm-hmm. then you might as well keep on going over right. here mm-hmm. and giving this person 50% of your income right. and get somewhere and sit out because that's where your level of consciousness is. Mm. So... I mean, you can't get away from it. No, you can't. You can't. But I do know a way that you can eat some macaroni and cheese now. There's a way you can eat macaroni and cheese. With the uh, lactose free? No, you can use, uh, my wife does it all the time. She makes cauliflower noodles. No, not the same thing. Sorry. (laughs) I just would rather just not. You still have cauliflower mac and cheese? Cauliflower I've mac and cheese. I've tasted it. It's not the same. Cheese. Tell me that. Yeah, the she still the uses the cheese. Yeah, they still. Yeah, still using the cheese. Yeah, my wife, yeah, my, the yeah, my wife yeah. she makes the uh, she cauliflower too. mac and cheese. And it's banging. It's, yeah, but, but you got the cheese. the cheese in there. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, well. We're talking about not having the cheese. There is no way around it. I've tried it. Yeah, there's no way I'm I've tried it. Hey, I, I, okay, then I, I missed that then. I'm thinking vegetarian. The only thing I'm thinking about is doing white noodles. Well, the noodles uh, the help noodles too can, yeah, because yeah. Um, I I know that I do, uh, I have a soy noodle that works really well. That's okay. delicious. Okay. And I, I make, I have um, 
I tried the chickpea. I like the chickpea noodles too. Oh, okay, yeah. The chickpea yeah. noodles are good yeah. too. Oh, they, yeah. they everything. Yeah, the soy yeah. noodles are good. Uh, beef knot is good where they have these beef granules, these uh, soy granules that um, take the place of um, ground beef. Okay. It's delicious. I make is my really? spaghetti with it and things like that. Mm -hmm. I I have I got a substitute for everything. But now when I tell you I've tried the cheese, <laughs> cashew cheese, it's okay. Oh, you can get really? with that. Okay. Nutritional yeast, all of those kinds of things. You can make it. You can you can kind of make it happen. Mm -hmm. But ain't nothing like that cheese, man. Sorry, are you vegan? Um, I'm not vegan. It's just that I have hyperfamilial cholesterolemia, which is just high cholesterol okay. for no reason. It's a gene really? in my family. Um, me and my sister have it. Mm -hmm. uh, we got tested for it. We have the gene and we qualify for like research and all this kind of stuff. Okay, I got you. So what? my cholesterol is like 375, right? Mm -hmm. For no reason. For no reason, Candy. It's just up there. And so There's nothing you can do about either exercise, like well, you exercise, for, work out. For your listeners, because there probably are some people that have it and they don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um you can you would have to exercise like the Tasmanian devil <laughs> in order to get it down. Like I gotcha. um I got a piece of hair. You got to exercise crazy. Like if you wanted to be a marathon runner or something like that, that might lower it a little bit, but it still might be like two twenty five. Wow. You know. Um cholesterol is a hormone mm -hmm. and it operates like a hormone in that it fluctuates in levels based on what's going on in your body. And what you're eating and what you're doing. It's a it's a part of the endocrine system. And so if your body needs to produce a lot of cholesterol to protect itself, it will do that. Mm -hmm. Right? That's good and bad. Good yeah. and bad because the bad cholesterol actually comes in and acts like a band aid on your arteries because That's like true. when you mm -hmm. eat a lot of sugar. Oh yeah. Um, or you eat things that are highly oxidizing, yeah. right? It, it it creates it it um it kind of eats away at your arteries, mm. and it makes them pores. Yeah. So then your blood gets stuck to them, and then it creates these little tears. And so the LDL cholesterol comes in and plugs it up so that you don't bleed out mm -hmm. through your arteries, wow. right? Mm -hmm. So then the cholesterol builds up. Well, if you just lower the cholesterol and you don't really change your eating habits and you don't look at cholesterol in its totality, you say, I need to lower my LDL cholesterol, please, and you take this medicine to lower your LDL cholesterol. Yeah then you are actually taking away the Band-Aid mm -hmm. that's plugging up this tearing of the arteries. Mm. So a lot of times people still have heart attacks and strokes and issues because the underlying issue is not the cholesterol. It's what's causing the cholesterol to... To, to to come to the scene of the of the of the issue, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so most of the time it's going to be your sugars and your fats and things like that. Right, right. And so, if for whatever reason you have this particular thing and diet doesn't really have anything to do with it, then you have to look at all of these medicines and things that they're giving you is kind of messing up other stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you it's not so easy to treat so now they're trying to figure out how to treat it but cholesterol is not a bad thing it's not bad for you right. i know it's good and bad cholesterol yeah. we need but it's none of it is both. bad mm -hmm. it's it's a marketing thing and you just have to look at other things around the cholesterol to see because there are people in other countries who have 400-level cholesterol. Mm, mm. But 
their blood is not sticky. Certain things you eat and do make sure blood has a sticky factor to factor to it, mm. such as clotting and things like that, mm. right? Mm. If you're eating correctly, not perfectly, but if you're eating correctly for you, mm-hmm. um, and your blood is flowing, and you don't have tears in your arteries that's screaming out for that LDL cholesterol to come and stick to that area. Yeah. You can have high cholesterol and still have perfect blood flow. Mm -hmm. Right. So you still just, it comes back down to that, to that discipline. Yeah. You know, that expansion. Yeah. But you don't want to get on medication. And that's what I tell people. You don't want to get on medication unless you have already, adjusted your diet as as much as you possibly can because that medication is yeah. not designed for that probably makes it worse healing. Huh? yeah i mean so far as it throws effects. everything out of balance right right because mm-hmm. cholesterol is a hormone you don't want to do anything to mess with your hormones mm-hmm. you know yeah i was uh looking at something here recently and it was on i think it was on pbs and uh, I heard a doctor was talking on there about salt. And she was saying the misconception is that you don't need iodine, but you need a certain level of iodine in your body. Uh, she said uh, too much salt is bad, but there is a certain level of iodine that the body needs to operate properly, to your point. And uh, when she was making that point, because I was looking at it, I was like, man, I'm going to cut everything you know sought out but when i saw that and then of course with my own doctor she was like well no mr ross you need a certain level of iodine in your body but there is certain salts that you need that can help you know help make that better so yeah salt is bad i want to say that too much salt is bad but the body does need a certain level of iodine in it right to operate uh, properly yeah you still need a certain level of right it. so i'm not saying that let me go ahead and say that yeah <laughs> i'm not a doctor i don't know it all or anything like that i don't have no medical degree but what i am saying is uh, the doctor was saying we do need a certain level of iodine in the mm-hmm. body because that yeah. iodine your thyroid i think yeah. operates off of iodine yeah. i'm not sure some. but yeah you know, i'm not sure but yeah uh, but mm-hmm. I do know you can do sea salt. You can do that pink salt. What, what's the name of that salt? Uh, uh, Himo, uh, Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt. Gray salt is yeah, good, for you. Is good mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you you. I think we go to the doctor and we try to ask the doctor to fix just one thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I know like for women, when we get older and start going through perimenopause, menopause, and our hormones are thrown out of balance. Mm-hmm. Um, we become at a greater risk for heart disease, so they say, yeah. due to the fact that cholesterol increases because it is a hormone. Right. But if you get your hormones in balance, it can lower the cholesterol 12%. Oh, wow. So that's something that you, even you all could look at because you all, y'all's testosterone goes down as you get older. That's true. Right? Mm-hmm. And so when you're looking at your numbers... You might want to just make sure that you're looking at the whole picture rather than just, oh, that one number. Because if I just focused on my cholesterol, I got a whole bunch of other stuff that needs to be addressed Yeah. other than just the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Why is the cholesterol going crazy? It went up 100 points after I started entering into that phase of my life. Mm. The doctors never once addressed that. I had to research that on my own and then try to attack it from another um, direction. So that's another thing that is is good to um, tell people is you have to research your own stuff sometimes and come up with a couple of perspectives and throw them out to your doctor. I'm not telling people not to go to your doctor. Right, 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 right. But not at all. Do some reading. Figure out I do the blood type diet, which is good. I'm a, I'm A positive and the list of foods that A pop blood type um A can eat 
actually has been working in regards to inflammation. Mm. So um, those are things that you can experiment with. You just experiment with them. Everybody is looking for an answer, but nobody, again, wants to experiment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, experiment with it. See what it does. See if there's any validity to it, if you see any difference with your aching joints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because... Turmeric could help with that. Yeah, turmeric helps with yeah, that. Beets, the beet powder. I, yeah, I, I take that. So I, I yeah, I know there's that some things you can do. It, yeah. it it helps. But I tell you, I was just talking to Tanya about that over the phone. I said, "Are your joints aching?" <laughs> like I'm like walking and around older you and get, I'm kind of yeah. like tiptoeing around. I'm yeah. like, uh -uh. I yeah. found myself having to do yoga this morning before I went to work. I was like, "Okay, I'm in here stretching, yeah. just on the regular, yeah. you know." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it's good to stretch, though. It is good. I'm it is good. I'm but I mean, I didn't have to yeah. until recently. <laughs> you know, now I got to. Yes, uh, you get up and it's snap. Pop, crackle, and pop, buddy. <laughs> ah, them joint feet pop. for me. Yeah. Your feet, uh, yeah. Yes. Ooh, I'm telling you. And so, of course, when I told her, she was like, you need to say <laughs> no old lady's going to come in my body and this is not going to happen, and da, 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 which is true. You know, uh, we got to do some self-talk. We yeah, got to do, do some positive talk, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, we do. But, you know, I had to hear that for a little while. And, yeah. and so I said, okay, in the meantime, I still got to stretch. <laughs> in the meantime, do some work I still right. might have to take me a little ibuprofen here yeah. and there. But all of that goes back to what am I willing to do in order to uh, take responsibility for it and make it a little bit better. I love that. Because we, we, we're in the prime of our life. We yes, got right. the wisdom. Yeah. yeah. And we're still able to move around. So we got mm -hmm. things to do before we just shrivel up. We can't oh, do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. got to do it. Got to do it. Got to do so. it. So, uh, you know, this has been a great conversation about uh, letting go and a great perspective from everybody up here. And um, uh, this this entire panel of uh, individuals up here. And um, this is uh, this has just been great uh, letting go. So, you know, make sure you go out and get your copy right here, as you can see right here. This wonderful book here, uh, Seven Steps to Letting Go, Even When It Seems Possible by Candy T. Jeter. Letting Go, A Guide for Successful Women, uh, I'm going to say, and men in midlife, mm -hmm. ready to relief, uh, release what's holding them back. So go get your copy. That's here. that midlife in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so midlife. Midlife, and also make sure you pick up a copy of 25 Thoughts About Your Destiny, Reconstruct Your World by Reconstructing Your Mind by Candy T. Jeter, make sure you pick up a copy. Candy, thank you so much for taking mm -hmm. out uh, a little bit of your time and uh, spending it, with, spending us, spending it with us here on the Ross Cloud Podcast. My pleasure, absolutely. We got a chance finally. It's been talk, a long time. Yeah, to really talk about you know just a little portion of your book, and uh, we have been meaning to do it, and we're gonna have you back again to go even deeper, and we'll talk even more about this book. Also, if you would, would you take the time uh, to uh, tell the folks how they can um, how they can follow you? Oh, just uh, you can reach me at I am Candy T Jeter. I am Candy C A N D I T J E T R. Or you can simply just go to the LettingGoBook dot com, and you can get my contact information there. All right. We absolutely appreciate it. And Al Shaw, I thank you so much, bro, for coming on. And yeah, man. Yeah, man. And, and giving your insight, your perspective, <laughs> man, as we went on. <laughs> uh, you, you was a little light tonight, but I think everything had been said, bro, I I, um, uh, which is awesome. If you would, Al, can you it tell the learning? It was, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was a nice uh, yeah. moment of uh, learning and uh, uh, listening. Candy, to you're that. brilliant. Yeah, you are, man. No, like seriously. Yeah, yeah, you really are. So, yeah. like, um, I was watching you tonight, and yeah, yeah, and and just like even like the way you explained 
you know, with your arteries. Like, Dave, you know, it's been mentioned. <laughs> they will not go to the dot for years. For years. But never made plain like that. Yeah. yeah. That's it pretty makes plain. Some sense, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, but for you to be able to bounce around from that, then, you know, we're talking about expanding your mind. You know, we've known each other for uh, years. Yeah. 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 A yeah. long time. Long time. A really long time. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, but you know, as far as connecting and having an opportunity to to interact and, you know, gain respect for where you are mentally, that's beautiful too. Yeah. And awesome. uh to be able to see that movement tonight. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. That awesome. awesome. Today's episode of the Ross Cloud Podcast is sponsored in part by gospelstationcharts.com, where you can view gospel radio station song charts and track the promotion of your song, such as view how many stations are playing your song and how often, including what day and time your song played. Check it out now. Visit gospelstationcharts.com.